I've just come back from off and had a hell of a time. It was amazing seeing all those super talented artists and a really enthusiastic crowd in person for the first time in a long time. And I wasn't aware how I missed those person to person interactions. So to everyone being there, visiting our talk, just hanging around, thanks so much. You made this whole weekend and my last days what it was. And it was really amazing. And I want to give a special shout out to Side Effects for inviting us there to off and to Vincent Schwenk, who shared the stage with me, which I think is a very brave thing of him to do. And in our talk, which was about getting designers, visually minded people into Houdini, we had a very basic, extremely quick example that serves as a first project that any non technically minded person person can click together quickly inside of Houdini. So here we go. What we're going to do is in Houdini, as soon as it started out, we're dropping down a geometry node and diving in there as this serves as a null, as a container for the geometry we're about to create. Then in here, I'll drop down a grid, which is Houdini's lingo for a plane, which I'll scale down to be two by two units in size and increasing the rows and columns a bit to 50 each to make this have a bit more detail in our simulation that we're going to set up. Next, I want to duplicate this grid to form several pieces of cloth, which I can do using the copy and transform node. And by just typing in copy in here, you can see it's already highlighted and then hitting shift and enter, Houdini automatically attaches this to our grid. If it's not attached, for example, like this, you'll just wire this in like this. On this copy node here, I want to rotate each copy by 11 degrees on X and Y. I want to have a total number of four copies and maybe offset this by 0.5 units each. So those individual pieces here don't intersect in the beginning. Next, I want to drape those over some geometry. So I'll create a collider. Houdini has quite an amazing set of test geometries. In this case, I'm going to use the pig head, which I'll just ghost here by selecting the template flag here. And thus the pig head is displayed in my viewport as this wireframe outline here. I'll scale it down a bit to say 0.6 of its original size and move it down minus 0.6 as well, like so. So those individual cloth pieces can then fall over it. And now I'm already at a point where I can configure my vellum simulation. That's the cloth simulation by using a vellum configure cloth node in here. And the left input takes the cloth geometry. That's those four copies we created here. And the rightmost input takes any collider geometry. Let's just uncheck the template flag here. And after this vellum cloth here, append a vellum solver again by shift enter, Houdini automatically attaches those three wires, which otherwise you'd have to do manually. Let's set the view flag on the solver here. And after a short while of thinking, our collision geometry is displayed again. In here, I just want to check the ground plane to enable a ground plane here, which I'll move down to, I don't know, minus 1.5 units. So it sits below the pig head like so. Already, I can maybe save this first by hitting control S and then specifying where we want to save this. So just giving this a file name. Let's go for simple underscore vellum. Hit accept and now it's saved. All right, let's hit play and see how the simulation turns out. Again, this is running in real time, not sped up. It's a rather quick simulation and it's already quite satisfying. But up here at the pig's ear, we can see some interpenetrations of the piece of cloth and some stretching. To get rid of that, the easiest method, just resetting this and in our vellum solver, increasing our sub steps to two. So each frame of the simulation, we're running two simulation steps now and not one single step as previously. Again, saving this and rerunning the simulation, you can see the simulation is now half as fast as it needs to run twice as many steps. But again, this is real time. And now you can see those interpenetration at the ear are gone mainly. One more thing that's happening here is this topmost piece of cloth sliding off the pig head here, especially if we simulate further, all those individual pieces just tend to fall off. And to fix that, I'll just go back into my vellum cloth here. And on the one hand, I'll dial up the edge length scale to make the cloth a bit thicker, have the intersections resolved a bit more easily. And then on our vellum solver, in the forces tab, I want to increase the friction by increasing the static threshold to one and the dynamic scale to 0 0.5. And now if I re-simulate this again, fingers crossed, hopefully those individual pieces of cloth should not slide from the pig head. And well, some of them do, some of them don't. A bit better than before. One last thing I could feel tempted to do is go back into my vellum cloth here and scroll down here until we see the stretch and bend constraints here and then dial in how much stretching versus how much bending is allowed. So by decreasing the bend stiffness, which is already quite low here, maybe adding another two zeros after the first leading, 
heading zero, we can make this piece of cloth still a bit more fluid like silk. I'll leave it at this. I wanted to keep it short, just your basic intro to Vellum, so you can explore those settings that are available here in the cloth node and the Vellum solver. Just the main question we get at this point is how do I export this for rendering in any other application? Because most likely when you're a beginner, you won't start rendering in Houdini. So after our solver here, the first thing I want to do is increase our cloth resolution here a bit by adding one step of subdivision, which I can easily do using the vellum post process, which again by shift enter, I can just attach after the vellum solver. In here, I'll just check Catmull Clark subdivision one step and that's increasing the mesh resolution here. As you can see now, we lost our pig head geometry because we're only outputting the simulated main geometry that is the cloth. So for export, let's merge that back using a merge node. Vellum post process output goes in here as well as does the pig head. And if we switch the view flag, we can see both geometries appear again. Now, the final trick before we write this out into an Alembic is to set up a path attribute, which allows the Alembic output, the Alembic export, to split this geometry in individual pieces, namely our four individual cloth pieces, as well as the individual pig head, which we use for collision. You can do that by using a connectivity node, attach it down here, and I'll set the connectivity type to primitives, call the attribute path, and set the attribute type to string. All right, finally, let's attach a ROP Alembic output, which you can only fully use if you've got an educational, an indie, or an FX license of Houdini. And for most of freelance folks around there, the indie version for I think 299 bucks a year is the way to go. So if you have that license, this node is fully available and fully functional. And in here, I just want to drag this down, check build hierarchy from attribute. We already call the attribute path. That's the one we generate in our connectivity node here. And then all I want to do is point this to a file output, which you can choose here. So I'll just put that into my folder that I selected and let's call this one vellum out dot abc. Hit enter. Make sure we check render frame range. So we're rendering the full range here. Let's save this and click save to disk. And immediately we see this progress bar here informing me how far Houdini has already exported my simulation. And this Alembic can be opened in Blender, in Maya or in Cinema 4D for further exploration or rendering. So pretty basic, pretty first setup for anyone new to Houdini. And I hope our off presentation will become available on sidefx.com within the next weeks. Usually sidefx is pretty quick with those. So you might want to keep an eye on their website. And if you want to learn more about Houdini or just plainly support us, consider becoming a patron of ours because it's through the help of our patrons that we are able to run Intagma. So thanks a lot to everyone supporting us with a very special thank you going out to important looking pirates, jellyfish pictures, the mill, method studios, electric theater, Pixonic, Random42, Rodeo Effects, Side Effects, Illusion, and Rafik Anadol Studio. Thanks so much for supporting us, folks. So, as always, intrigued to see what you... Thanks so much for supporting us. So, as always, intrigued to see what you folks cook up. So don't be shy sharing. And until next time, as always, it's cheers and goodbye.